Doodle bud. Over the years, I have amassed quite the collection of fountain pens, but this one right here really confuses me. What we have here is the Mahjong, or I call it Majan V1 fountain pen, obviously. This was sent to me by a 365 Days Stationery. They are a store on AliExpress. They sent a few pens for me to review and share some thoughts with everyone there. So if you're looking at stuff on there, check out their store. They got some good stuff and good deals. And I saw this on there and he want, they wanted to send me one. And I was like, well, okay, send it on over. I don't get the pen. Maybe if I get my hands on it, I will get it. I'll tell you this, the pen does write wonderfully. I got no problems with that. Holds lots of ink. I even did a super fill on here to really fill it up. I'll show you how you do that with the vac filler, all that cool stuff. But it still really confuses me. This design, I just don't get it. What I'll do before I get into that and kind of beat it up a little bit, but there's really nothing functionally wrong with it, but I still don't understand it. I'll write with it because it does a great job. So I, I want to get that out of the way, get the positives out of the way. But I'll roll through a few things with you and I, I'm still confused but it still works. So I don't know what that means. Is it a good pen? Is it not a good pen? I guess it writes and it looks unique. <laughs> Let's uh, put some ink to paper to start off with. One cool thing is I'm not usually very good at matching ink colors to pens, but you'll see in a moment, this ink, this Robert Oster whiskey matches this just perfectly. Possibly the reason the nib writes so well is because it is super quality. All kidding aside, you know, I don't know what else to show in the writing sample. It, I've been using it for a week now and I haven't had any problems. It has performed exactly as it should. It's quite smooth. I believe this is a fine nib. It doesn't say anywhere on here, but the flow is great. It's nice and smooth, lays down the ink and all that good stuff. And it does fit in the hand, but this big knob here on the back, I'm really confused by. I'm really confused by the cap. Uh, I'm also confused by the clip. Let's run you through it and see if maybe we can figure this thing out together. Size-wise, here's a few pens. We have a Twisby Eco, an Estabrook SD, regular size. Then we got the V1 by Mahjong, Lamy 2000. Diplomat Excellence A2. Now this is the part where things start to get a little strange. We take off the caps, you know, regular looking cap, regular looking cap, we got a slip cap, everything's normal. Then we take this one off and the whole pen is a cap. I, uh, I don't know, maybe the person who designed it has like an affinity for test tubes, but that's, that's a bit of a strange one. You can see cap off, it, uh, it fits right in there with some of those pens and it's a reasonable size. And in case you're wondering, no, does not post. Most pens end off in a taper or something like that, or maybe are squared off, but usually there's some type of roundness or taper towards the end of the pen. This one goes a hard right, it goes the other direction. And they put a giant filling knob here in the back. This is to operate the vacuum filler system. And consequently, it's quite large. It is light, but all the weight now is right in the back of the pen. This is a very, very light body pen. So you just have injection molded plastic here. The, you know, the nib weighs nothing. The feed weighs nothing. That's a tiny little aluminum ring. So all the whole weight of the pen is really right here on the back of it, which is sort of the opposite of what you want to do. People complain about pens if it's back weighted or if you put the cap on, does it back weight it? This one's just right out of the gate, just puts all the weight right in the back. Fortunately, it actually does work. Uh, you know, the way it sits in my hand, I, I don't really feel the wear kit because it just carries it right there in the hand. But depending on how your hand size and how you hold your pen, you might find that really, really odd and kind of annoying. The two most kind of common clips that you have are, are ones where it just kind of deflects a little bit like so, or then you'll have one with a spring clip mechanism. Some have a little ball to help on the ends with some of them too, but th those are sort of the most two type of common clips and clip sizes are usually like lengths and stuff are sort of in the ballpark of each other. And this one gets a little, said, let's get weird <laughs> and let's make it, I don't know if that's even functionally too short. I'm not sure, but it is the shortest clip I've ever seen on a pen. Now I am of a younger generation where my dress shirts don't have front pockets anymore. 
Uh, that's sort of a, a while ago that design was around, not so much now. But, you know, occasionally I will clip a pen into my suit jacket front pocket. The Lamy 2000 is great for that. Spring clip just goes over top, doesn't sit up too high. Great. All right. I'm curious if this will even do it because you have to worry about the depth of a pocket. Okay, at least it's, I thought it was going to be, it's just sink right down in there. I'm curious just because that clip is so short. I guess if you get it it's right on, okay, you can just get in there, but it's not the easiest to clip on and off. I guess it does sit up. People might inquire, what is that in your jacket pocket? Most of the time when I use a clip, it is to sort of clip the pen onto the notebook like so, so I can just have everything together. Um, again, I guess it works, but it is, it's just a strange one. Just something strange about it, but the clip is functional. Having been playing with this for a week, the only thing I can think of is you're maybe supposed to have the pen like this on your desk. And you, you know, you're supposed to store, I guess, your pens nib up in a pen holder on your desk. I, mine are always in a case, so they're lying flat, but I guess, you know, you could just do that. I still don't get the giant cap. But maybe that is the whole point of that giant knob on the bottom is to act as a stand. It hasn't happened yet because also I don't think I've left it uh, with the cap on long enough. Again, giant cap, which means you have enormous air volume inside of this tube. It, it's a tube. Let's just call it that. It's not a cap. <laughs> Anyways, so when you go to put a pen into the cap here, it protects the nib and it also is supposed to keep the nib from drying out two functions. Nib dry out is a massive one. So it should have a nice seal. Now I believe it seals well down here on the threads, but you also have a massive air volume. You, you'd want to do the opposite. You would want to minimize the air volume to minimize uh, the opportunity for dry out. Here it is the whole pen, like I said, is a cap. So I still don't sort of get the idea of it. I'm actually curious. Uh, you know, now that I think of it, this actually might be a brilliant idea. I wonder how much volume this cap holds because maybe it also doubles as a shot glass. So we might as well be all scientific here. I'll weigh the cap with nothing in it. Oh, by the way, you can see a little ink got down here in the threads. Uh, this end finial, like you can see it's threaded in there. Like I don't want to go any harder. It's not moving like there. Maybe there's a heat. I don't know. I'm trying to maybe it's a left hand thread. Tried that too. I can't get it to budge without going way harder than I think I should go and risk it breaking. So to all you clean freaks out there, uh, you're just going to have to live with that. Anyways, so we'll measure the tube like so, 14.4, we'll tear that, and then we'll fill this with water, and since density of water is 1, this will tell us the volume. So filling it right to the brim here, we've got about 16 grams, which means 16 milliliters and one sh a shot, one ounce, Imperial, I think is 28 milliliters. So we're just, just over about half an ounce. Now the density of water and alcohol is different. I thought let's, let's, to be thorough, let's uh, check this with alcohol. So I just happen to have something right handy here. A little old smoky apple pie moonshine. This stuff I think is delicious. So let's just, let's just test it. Let's, you know, this is purely in the name of science. Now that is interesting because it's less dense, the same volume should weigh less. We'll, we'll chalk that up to experimental error. Now, to be very thorough, I must, I must double check to make sure that it still will serve as like about a half a shot. So I'll, I'll get it back down to about 14 grams here. We'll call that close enough. See how it's a good idea not to fill something right to the top so you don't spill, spill it. And uh, let's just see if this works. Ah, yes. So what you could do, let's see if you're somewhere and you need to make a drink. Just fill two of these up and you got your one out shot. So overall, the pen itself weighs, let's see here, 39 and change. Pop off the cap because you are not gonna write with the cap on or posted. 24.7 with a pretty full all the way ink chamber. So let's jot that down. It was 24.7, I believe. And that is a full full. 
I'll empty out the pen, we'll weigh it, and then I'll show you how to do a regular vac fill and then how to do a super fill. So I am going to return the ink back to the bottle and possibly contaminate everything. You crack it open here, which by the way, let me show you, there's a little shutoff valve in here. If you're writing with a vac filler and all of a sudden it dries up. The cool thing with this one, because it is clear, you can see the ink in here, but what will happen is you're shutting off this whole ink chamber from the lower reservoir, which is where your feet is. So once this depletes, no more ink's gonna go from here. So you do have to open them up. You can write with it open, or just open it, let it refill, and then close it back down again. Pull back the vacuum rod. Oh, doing this on camera, trying to capture this is just terrible. I can feel the mess happening already, but let's just try this. To press the plunger, you don't want the nib inside the bottle or else you'll suck in more ink. There we go. The ink's coming out. Let me go uh, do that process a few times with some water to clean it out. So that's about as clean as I could get it uh, just working in the sink. The nib and feed, they screw out all together in a housing. They do separate too. You just got to kind of wiggle and pull it out. No need to do that. I don't want to mess with stuff. And also watch out because there are uh, O-rings here. So yeah, it's not one there, but uh, just here at the end. And you are going to want to grease this one. I don't feel any grease on it. There's a little groove. It sits in there. And when you screw it in, it's going past the threads first and getting all chewed up. Uh, now it is at least plastic, but that will, you know, put it out of place and probably put a kink in the gasket because I can have it roll over a little bit. So you want to put a little grease in there. For me, this is good enough, but I know some folks, it's got to be perfect, perfect clean, and that will just make your head explode. So you can take this off. You need a seven millimeter wrench, uh, which I do not have. So I got my little adjustable. We got metal threads kind of a coarse profile into this body i would not recommend doing it i would just say live with the little bit of ink that's there but if you're gonna do it let me at least show you how you do it so you twist the pen body not the wrench so you can sort of control the pressure more there are some o-rings in there by the looks of it it almost seems like oh maybe not i think there are though and then the whole assembly comes off yeah there are the o-rings so then you can get in here with your tissue do your thing get it all cleaned out it's all going to be bone dry, so you're going to have to reapply a little bit of silicone grease on here and on the O-rings and do it here as well. If you have a Twisby pen, obviously use that little tiny bottle of silicone grease that comes with it. If you don't, you could buy that stuff or get uh, one of these here. I think I got this, I don't know if it was Anderson Pens or anyway, someplace I bought some pen repair supplies. I bought a tiny little jar of this silicone grease and this will last probably my entire lifetime. So just a little bit on each of these here. The other o-ring on the nib housing as i showed you and then reassemble and all of that was to find out the dry weight which i should have recorded when i first got the pen 22.7 we had 24.7 so a full fill you can get two milliliters of ink and a regular fill i think you get about 1.5 1.6 let me show you how to do that actually before i do that let's see. i'm curious what the difference is in volume how much air volume is left after you put the pen in. So what I'll do here is I'm going to fill this back up with water. We had 16 millimeters, milliliters, I should say, of, of water in here. I'm going to take this to the sink, put the pen in, screw it back down so all the water is going to overflow, get out of there. I'll reweigh it, and then we'll be left with how much volume is left, how much airspace is left inside of here when the pen has got the cap on. Let's put this in, let it all overflow. There we go, a little bit of fun here. Let's screw this down. Okay, so we're left with some water. Let's pop the pen back out and let's reweigh. And that's going to leave us with how much volume is left after you put the pen in. See here, so we are left with about 4.8 milliliters of water. So that lets you know the volume of air that's left in the pen. I'm interested what that is versus, say, a regular pen. Here's a Twisby Eco Fold to the brim. Let's do the same thing with this one. And so this one, that's actually fairly close about two milliliters of water less so the overall air volume is not as bad as i thought i'm glad i did that and this is why you have to do the experiment let's show you the super fill now that might be tricky showing this with it's we've got a little bit of ink in here let's put a couple drops of ink in here so you can see this on the camera so here's the standard fill you pull you will unscrew this first i should say pull back the plunger 
you're going to depress the plunger. There's this little ridge right here, so the gasket's sealing, pushing out the air. There's a vacuum behind it. Once it gets past here, the gasket will no longer be sealed, and ink or liquid, whatever you got going on, is going to rush in to fill that volume because there's low air pressure there. There's a slight vacuum. That's why they call it a vac filler. So we're going to depress it. The air came out, and you just leave it for a second or two there, and it sucked up the ink. 22.7 was the empty weight, so now we're 24.2, let's call it. So full fill was 24.7, so there's about an extra half milliliter I was able to get into the pen. So let me show you how you do this. I'll try to capture this. So you're going to pull the plunger back. And what we need to do to get a full fill is remove some of this air. So very slowly, don't let it get away on you. We're going to push it up. The ink's going to go up here a little bit. Very careful. Might be a good idea to have a, uh, a tissue around the pen while you're doing this. Okay, but we'll just show you here. Slowly we go, slowly we, we go. The air is going out. you got to keep an eye on the line here. This is the line. We don't want the plunger to go past that or else whew, it's going to shoot everything out. But what we want to do is keep pushing until all that air goes out. So we're getting up top there. Might have to give a little tap. Again, we're mindful of that little line. Okay, if uh, you might get a little bit of stuff come out the nib. So far, so good. Okay, now it's starting to come out the feet. So we're fully into there. We got all the air out. That's why it's a little bit of risky business. One false move and you got ink flying everywhere. Hold it sturdy. Put it back down. Depress it one more time. There we go, and we should be right full all the way now. So this should be around that 24.7. Ooh, we got some bonus milliliters. So we got up to 25. So this is over to two milliliters of ink. We got 2.3. So that, everybody, is how you super fill a vac filler. But again, be careful. Even just tightening that down, a little bit of extra stuff comes out the end there. So tell you what, after all of that, I am starting to change my mind a little bit on the pen. I say I like unique designs, and this is very unique. Still doesn't quite make sense to me. Um, yeah, I, st I still really don't get it, but it does work. We got a short, strange clip, really back-weighted, uh, an entire pen that's just essentially capped that looks like a test tube, but we got some bonus features. This serves, if you fill it to just below the threads there, pretty accurately as half a shot. So obviously you're going to want to do two of those. We got a pretty good ink capacity, a right smooth, decent size, comparable to other sizes. Now, like I said, that is mega back weighted, but for me, it's not overly heavy as a pen altogether. What was it 24, 25 grams or so? So it's not crazy, but most, <laughs> most of that's way back there. And it writes at the end of the day, I've, you know, I've had some pretty expensive pens come into my hands that don't write. And this one did a perfect job right out of the gate. And to top it off, you just put it like that on your desk, and voila. It does look very different from normal fountain pens, but there's nothing wrong with trying something different. And I am actually uh, thankful there to 365 Days Stationery for sending me this very different fountain pen to review. Maybe I've sort of warmed up to it a little bit. Check out their site there. I'll leave a link down below if you want to see what they got and other pens they have as well. I want to thank you for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one. I don't know. This It's a bit of an oddball one, but my concern sort of went away. I thought, well, we'd have an issue. There's so much air volume. It wasn't that much more than a Twisby. I haven't had nib dry out issues. Holds lots of ink. The clip is weird, but it still did go into a shirt pocket, and I thought it was going to sit right and stick out all strange. No, it actually it worked out no problem. So I guess some of the concerns I had, and when you actually look into them, aren't really there. There's this cool button over here. They say if you press it, good fortune comes your way. Give it a go. Leave it there for now. We'll catch you next time.